Okay guys, welcome back. The C20's up on the lift. We're gonna do visual inspections. We're gonna look at the brakes, look at U-joints, look at everything. Um, one thing I noticed when I put it up here because I had to go snooping. This bleeder for the wheel cylinder is broke. So that's nice. Also, they're very rusty. So I don't know what to do about that one. Hmm, I was just looking at this rear axle. Just really weird that a lot of drum is sticking out, but I noticed there's some sort of spacer back there. I don't know if these C20s in their earlier stages here had skinny rear axles or, or what that is, unless someone put a dually spacer on there for some reason because they didn't like how it looked or something. Who knows? Just weird, weird stuff. I gotta get this, what I later found out to be a CB coax wire off of here so it's not hanging below the truck. Um, nothing really looks to be leaking extremely down here. There's dirt, there's grease. It's whatever. I'm not worried about it. It's gonna be a driver. I do also have to change the oil. The oil is getting there. Yeah, it's pretty grimy, but overall it really isn't a whole lot of you know terrible rust except for the cap and stuff has got rust i'm not worried about that though but as far as the <clears throat> the rest of the truck though the rest of the truck is really actually pretty decent and this there's some rust here but this really isn't it isn't pitted you can see where i scraped with my flashlight there it's not really that pitted so fuel tank straps got some rust but f tell me show me a square body that doesn't have rusty fuel tank straps once yeah that's what I thought. But this exhaust is going to go. This is going to, not today, but it's going to go. It's patched up. So I guess the first thing I'm probably going to do, probably going to lower this thing and inspect these front brakes. Because um, it does have that pull issue. If I can get rid of the pull issue, I don't know what I'm going to do with the back ones here. Uh, it's it's It was definitely drivable. It just pulled really hard when you stepped on the brakes. So, um I'll probably more than likely fix the front and then work on the back later. Not the best thing to do, but um, I'm sure the back still work a little bit. You know, not up to 100% like they should, but they should probably work a, a little. So I want to get the fronts fixed and then move to the back. So one, one thing at a time. But I do have new shocks that I have on the way for this thing. Um... What else do I have that I'm getting for this thing? Uh, I do have a set of headers coming so I can put new exhaust on here and I got three inch exhaust coming for it. I don't have a per particular um, thing with three inch exhaust. It's just a collector had three inch exhaust. I ordered one of those build your own kits. Then I don't have to get an adapter. I'm just gonna run three inch. Probably gonna go up over the axle with it, but I don't know if I'll come out the back of the truck. I'll probably just come up over the axle and have them come out at an angle and an end maybe like right here or something something kind of simple so and then i'm going to use the rest of that three inch exhaust that i have left over for the ls truck when i do that cam swap i can pretty much bank that the cam swap is going to be so radical it's not really going to be driven on the street a whole lot more well it'll be driven on the street but it just won't be you know out there you know out and about like it is now so it's probably going to get some pretty cool exhaust you'll, you'll like that you guys will like that one but for now, I'm going to lower this thing and get these. I'm actually going to get all four tires off, see what's going on in the back there with those spacer-looking things. Just check everything out and see what I can see. Later on, when I do the oil change, we'll check, we'll check the diff fluid. We'll see what, how that's looking. So, pads are low. They're not bad. They're definitely getting there. I don't know why it pulls to the right so bad. This one is not hung up by all means. So I guess I'll pull the other side off. I know that one isn't hung up because I spun the wheel. But I'll still pull the other side off and check everything out, I guess, and see. Maybe I, I wish I had someone here to spin it and then I can hit the brake and see, you know, how fast it comes on or what the deal is. But... I guess I'm going to pull the other side off and visually inspect that side too. So 
I'm gonna pull the other side off. So this side looks pretty bad too. I shouldn't say too, this side looks worse than the other side. Definitely spins a little harder. Um, there's pad there, but not much. This side looks worse, so I guess I gotta get somebody here to spin it and I can hit the brakes and see what happens. Alrighty guys, so I'm just moving on now because Parts store did not have the calipers. They have the pads, but they can have the calipers for me tomorrow. So that'll be in another video. But now we're going to move on to back here. We're going to check the diff fluid. We're going to change the oil. We're going to grease everything. We're going to also clean up the interior a little bit. So I'm going to start getting to work, get you guys some content for this part two of the C20 project. All right, so just a little quick tip here. If you can't see your differen differential fluid because it's a dark black infamous hole, take and find a piece of wire, cut it real short, and then you can stick the wire in here and see how high, how low your diff fluid is. So it looks like we're kind of low because I stuck it down right there. I'm gonna go grab some more diff fluid, top off the diff fluid, then we're gonna move on to change the new oil. go as you could probably see in the time lapse video i filled it up and then fluid started coming out as i pulled the uh tub of gear lube out can't find my words <laughs> anyway i put the plug in right away now i just cleaned her off with a little brake clean good thing i bought the last case of brake clean right i used a crap ton of it anyway done with the nonsense let's move on to changing some oil Ooh, that oil looks like sh she's definitely due. Yeah, she definitely looks like she's due for an oil change. Alright, so I'm going to touch on this subject before I get too carried away because I know somebody is going to ask, what kind of oil do you use? To me, it doesn't matter. I know these are, say, both STP, but it doesn't matter. We got Pennzoil on the shelf. We got whatever's on sale. As long as it's 10W30 and, and it has some kind of anti-wear protectives. Now, anti-wear protectives. The only vehicles i concern or i have a concern about what oil i use in are the ls truck and my 454 truck i use special oils for those otherwise brands to me don't matter but one thing that does matter that i put in every single one of these older vehicle motors is this stp oil treatment why right here this contains zinc someone's gonna have the comment you know if you use shell rotella 1540d soil blah 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 yeah, but that's fine, but I don't want to use 1540 because it's such a thicker oil. I want to use 10W30. This is the way to get around it. You can get this at Fleet Farm. I don't know if you have a Fleet Farm by you. You can get this at most of your parts stores, your, your car parts houses. But this is what you want to see. It contains zinc. You need that zinc. These older motors need zinc in their oil, or you'll take camshafts out, bearings out, crankshafts. You can, it'll destroy it if it doesn't have zinc in it. I know it sounds weird, and there's a lot of guys out there that that stuff doesn't matter to them because they know this and they know that, but to me, I found zinc works better. That motor right there has a bad camshaft in it. Why? 99% probably because it doesn't have, didn't have zinc running it because someone just used cheap oil. It was the guy's plow truck. He just probably changed whatever oil he could find in it. So I run zinc in everything that's got an older motor in it. Now that I just went on and rambled for a minute and a half about what kind of oil I run, because I'm sure I'm, someone's gonna have that comment, we're gonna put the oil in the truck now. Alright, 
so we got two uh, grease fittings down here that I'm gonna grease. One's on the U-joint itself and then one's on the slip yoke. The rest of the U-joints are actually greaseless U-joints, which kind of mind boggling, but, and these are actually easy to get to, believe it or not. We got grease coming out of the back of the slip yoke. That means she's full. Grease coming out of the ends of the U joints, that means they're full. everything's greased up on the front end i got those u-joints greased um i think now it's time to bring her down and we can do some interior work all right so here's some really cool information i found in the interior i want to show you guys here's the specs of the truck if you want to pause it and read it you can but there's one thing in particular i want to show you guys on here that will be right here scottsdale equipment Bonanza package. Now look at this. Bonanza. Right? Scottsdale. But that is a Scottsdale emblem on a wood grain dash. Wood grain interior. Basically, the Scottsdale equipment is everything else is Scottsdale, except for the Bonanza package includes wood grain interior. I'm assuming a wood bed option because this thing has got a wood bed and some other features that I have don't know or anything like that. And here is the original build sheet. It was folded up in that little envelope thingy with the rest of this stuff in the interior. Now here's your maintenance schedule for your light duty trucks. Tells you everything you need to do for maintenance. Here's the owner's manual. Here's the warranty card. Not gonna show the guy's name. Um, he doesn't need to be known. I'm sure he doesn't live there anymore. Here is the original piece of paper of the guy who bought it. It was originally bought in Erickson Chevrolet Company in Coon Valley, Wisconsin for $5,100. Paid 610 of 76. All the options there. Here's the card from when it went from the, first, the original owner to the second owner. Here's the title registration when it went to the second owner. Here's some other stuff about what it, when it went from the original owner to the second owner. Now I thought this stuff was all kind of cool. Usually you don't get the, you know, see the build sheet. The build sheet is in amazing shape, by the way. It's not, oh, and it folded itself up on me. Well, I'm one-handed. Um, 350, three-speed auto. You know, just stuff like that. Speedo gear. Um, wood floor. Box fleet wood floor. So I know this is for this truck. Because that you hardly see a wood flooring in a fleet side. Um, the dark saddle interior, chrome bumper, rear step bumper. Um, I seen the axle ratio in here earlier. Um, let's see if I can find it. Oh yeah, rear axle ratio 373. I'm gonna kind of clean out the interior. There isn't really a whole lot I can show you besides some before and after stuff because it's kind of compact in there. Not a really good spot to put the camera. I'll get the interior opened up and show you what it looks like now after I put this stuff away. Then I'll show you what it looks like after I vacuum it and clean it. So, sorry to say it guys, but we're not going to get to the interior today. I ended up losing track of time. I had to get everything put back inside, get this thing up in the air so I could park the truck underneath it. So I guess you'll have to stay tuned for part three to see the interior. 
We may not get to the interior even in part three, but most importantly, we're for sure gonna get these brakes figured out. I got the new calipers and pads on the way. I'm gonna try and bleed the line in the back. Um, they made a splice in the line right there. I know you can't see it very well, but they made a splice in the line. So hopefully the rest of that line, which is on the rear end, which is lower than where they made that splice, still has fluid in it. So I'll be able to bleed it by just bleeding the lines because I know that one bleeder is cracked. But anyway, we'll get the brakes figured out in part three, hopefully all the way, but we'll for sure get the front brakes figured out. We'll probably be able to clean a little bit on part three as well. Um, later on though, um, I don't know when I'll get to it, but I'll for sure show you guys how to put the LED lights in your dash so you can have uh, be able to see your dash a lot better at night. So, so you'll have to stay tuned for that, but there's plenty more to come with this truck. Don't worry, you'll see this truck a heck of a lot. Um, I gotta get this thing going on the road. I wanna drive it before the snow flies, but I also wanna drive it as my daily driver in the LS truck. I'm kinda driving around right now. That thing is crazy terrible on gas, kinda loud. I wanna be able to get this thing on the road and be ro road worthy. Then when I get this one done, this one will be my winter beater. This one also has got some rust on it. So that's why this one's my winter beater. It's, it's nice, the frame is nice. The frame is nice on both of these. Both of these would make a really good truck to restore, but this one's my winter beater. That was my very first truck, so I wanna keep that one going. I wanna drive that one in the winter because it's a four wheel drive. So don't worry, there's plenty more content to come with this guy. There's plenty more content to come with the orange one. You're probably gonna see a lot of the orange one um, because I gotta get it going. Hopefully the transmission is done for this thing soon. It should be done very soon. They said around November 1st, they'll get to it. So other than that, that's a wrap. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please keep an eye out for part three. Please subscribe, please like, please watch my videos if you're subscribed. Make sure that notification bell is on. Share my videos, I don't care. Do what you want with them. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.